Progrip Racing presents Show Us Your Tips midweek preview for the 30th of March 2021. Eva, how are you going? Very good, thanks, Daggy. How are you, Matt? Yeah, good. Big golden sliver day for you. Oh, fantastic day out at the track. It was pretty quiet out there, actually. Uh, it wasn't a huge crowd, so they must have limited a bit. But, um, yeah, it meant that there were short, short queues to the bar and uh, had plenty because we were backing plenty of winners. And um, I suppose the biggest talking point, stay inside, was pretty dominant. Um, oh, fantastic. So, massive win. Whether we see it again seems to be dubious, so we might have to worry about it all. But a bit of talk that well, it's gone straight for a spell, but I'd be surprised if it comes back, to be honest, from reading between some of what's come out of um, Richard Friedman in the last week or so. Um, and I guess, I suppose the other big win of the day was Eduardo, which was, which was good because it was my biggest bet in the day too. So, a very easy watch. Yeah, and, probably- um, Outstanding, outstanding. Just stamped itself um, as a genuine top class sprinter. Uh, gave nothing else a chance. I might, but my um, my win for the day was very elegant. Uh, yeah. Daggy, uh, look, just outstanding mare, um, and yeah, was look just perfectly ridden and uh, showed just how tough tough she is. Uh, yeah, you got that one right. I was with a D, but it was a, a cracking race, and but she looked to be travelling a long way out too. So. I think it was probably yeah, for you as certainly. well. Yeah, it was. It was. A, it was a fairly easy watch. I thought. Um, I thought the six hundred when the deed had to be stoked up. That very elegant. Just had that sit in the stream and uh, was produced at the right time. So that was brilliant. Polly Gray. I was very excited about because that set me, got me flying for the start of the day, and uh, um, it was good. Out, outside of uh, Odium in the first, which we. Uh, we did tip and uh, got it at tens. That would have been a nice start to the day. And Avilius, um, uh, yeah, just, I don't, that was a tough watch. I don't think that was the best ride. Uh, just sh- it should have won. It should have been stoked up earlier and got into the race earlier. It's the best best uh, stayer and they just produced a run too late. But uh, overall, it was a good day. Uh, and just shout out to Trent who uh, suggested we play the early quarter, which we did get. Um, so... Yeah, handled it again quite well, and I'm sure we'll be back as we head towards the the rest of the championships. Um, and we swept the card. The four bets we put out at Bendigo uh, all won. So swept, yep. the, swept the card there with uh, Fighting Harada, Ana Visto, Starry Legend, and the other one who I've just forgotten. Anyway, we got all four between us, so it was a, yes. it was a good day out. And um, but we'll uh, we'll move on now. Um, We've got the Vinery and the uh, and some Easter racing from Caulfield to look at later in the week. But for now, we're going to head to Warwick Farm for Progroup Racing. Check out progroupracing.com.au for their free tips and extensive guides. And we'll have a look at Warwick Farm where it's a drying track, uh, a very good drying day today. I'm saying it's probably getting into the dead range by the time we kick off tomorrow afternoon. Um with the rail in the three should play pretty fair. I think the last time we had this setup was late last year and it played played pretty well. I'm happy to skip the first, which is a tier old. There's uh, nothing I liked in yeah. the gate and nothing I liked that hadn't. So happy to leave them. Yeah, hundred percent. Keep moving. Race two, three year old maiden here. Um, I'll kick us away this week. Uh, I like the trials here of Captive Air, the top weight. Um, was pretty nice, pretty, uh, okay form in the first prep. Um, nice trial for this. Uh, it's Wall has been rolling out one of these lightly raced sort of three year olds every week, and um, they've been doing the job. And pretty happy to stick here. Um, and what are we about four dollars, three dollars ninety at the moment? I think it's a good chance in this race. Uh, and I think the main danger is a stable mate for the same reasons, um, which was eight dollars now five. I'm um, just betting around the favorite so. Captive area for me in the first and a saver on Ron Barros. How about yourself, Beaver? Anything thoughts here? Yeah, no, nothing for me here, mate. Uh, I'll leave you, the punters, to follow you in the second, mate. Uh, race three, benchmark 78, the staying contest. You leaving this one alone? No, no, I'm going to go for Heart of Poussant, so I've followed it um, the first two starts, I jumped off last start, and rightly so. I just didn't quite get there, but it, I thought it was a really nice run. Uh, I thought 
thought it wound up nicely, hit the line really well, uh, gets the right, uh, it's got the right jockey tomorrow. Uh, drawn so it'll get a run in the running line, sit midfield to the back and the step up the 2200s right up its alley. So if it's going to win a race, uh, tomorrow will be the day. I'm going to go with uh, Toscanini here. Um, I was concerned about Harder for Sons 15 to 22. Uh, it was an okay run in that race. I admit that, but Toscani just the Saturday back to Wednesday. Uh, Tom Mark went on, probably just tags. Shangani Patrol, who is on a seven-day backup and has had a 2,500-meter lead up and will be, again, my saver in the race, just getting control. But uh, for me, Toscanini, the second favorite again there. Where you was go? four lengths off. Walsh Legend, who was awful on the weekend. Yeah, uh, I admit that. Uh but to get right way out of its ground, it was never a chance. I so, thought yeah. that would. I thought it would lead that race, and it ended up somewhere. Not third last. Close. Yeah, it was third last, and had to peel the widest, and was okay. But um, I, understand, I, I agree with what you're saying with the Welsh Legend. Um, not a strong race, though. Eh? Let's. Uh, we'll find out tomorrow. I think we've uh, all had enough of Alakan and anything else in this race. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Race four. You like anything here? No, I skipped to race five here, mate. Yeah, um, we're just quickly on race four. The two favourites tied to each other. Blesk had no luck out wide in the right part of the track. I Master had no luck in the worst part of the track. Uh, was well backed. Um, I, I don't like either of them actually. I'll just have. I'll probably play away and play sort of again the Waller Wednesday form at the moment. Uh, Relucent coming back. Um, it was okay first up. Just. Um, only about a length off, off uh, Petronius uh, coming down the outside. And I think stepping up in distance now, Canberra or Willa, hopefully making a name for himself in Sydney. Um, might be the play. Just I um, just don't know about that lead up, but no real confidence there. What do you like in the fifth? Yeah, I like Dundee, uh, Dundee Lee. Um, I really thought uh, last run was a really good good uh, form line. Beat um, harder Passants. It was well found uh, last start and didn't let the punters down. And I think it can back that form up. Its last three starts have been pretty good. Um, so if it can get itself some cover early on and a little bit of luck, um, I expect this horse to be right in the finish again, around the $5 mark. I thought that was pretty good odds in a pretty open affair. Well, we'll get the line there with um, your tip earlier, hard for Sons. Yeah, 100%. Um, I thought it didn't... It was down to run day. It hasn't, has it? No. I thought Darling Diamond um, can run well here with control. It uh, was okay. Resume at Kembla. And uh, just looking at racing, New South Wales map here. Rolls a, uh, pulls through some gate two and, and should lead and have a comfortable lead. Um, surprised Dundee Lee's map so far back that they have that in the running line. Um, you know, third back in the line. So good spot for it. But I thought, I didn't get the, probably the two. So. Yeah, everything you said on Dundee's right as well. So, yeah, I haven't said much there, but um, they're the two. Are we playing the race around? Uh, where are you going to next? Anything in the sixth? Benchmark 78? Yeah, yeah, I did have something in the sixth. Um, pretty open affair. I, I narrowed it down to two, um, Saigon and Super. And I'm just leading to, just leaning towards Super. Um, third up. Uh, gets a couple of kilos clean from Tom Sherry. And I think it's form for a race like this is pretty good. Um, first two runs haven't been great, uh, but previous to that in last preparation had some really good form against some really good quality horses. Um, so if you go back a little bit, um, I think it beat Spirit Ridge. Um uh, Ran well. It's Rose Hill Gardens behind horses like Too Big Fari and Great News. Um, and then prior to that, had beaten horses like La Tigressa. And so I think it's got uh, a good chance in this if it can find some of the form that it found in the previous prep. Um, so super for me, uh, just on top, slightly in front of Saigon, who's going well. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going the other way. Saigon, I really like its return. Um, that form's been franked. The Irish run just missed behind Hungry Heart and then Petronius won since. Um, 
yeah, I thought it was a really nice return. Just had to duck and weave through, and I think this is a nice setup here. Uh, and, and reasonable form all the way through here. Um, I know last time here, it, uh, where are we here? Oh, and it has a track, sorry, track and distance set up behind the ocean. I was at that run last start, I should say. Um, everything you said about Super Grief, what do you, you just taking on La Gay Soleil? Or? Yeah, I am. Just yeah. taking it on. Okay. Yeah, no, it, both its wins have been first up, but. Um, Sort of, yeah, they've been on Kenzo and it's hard to get a line through some of them. So I was just taking a chance here as well um, to get it beat. 1100 metre benchmark 72 is race seven. Got a bet for us? Yeah, I do. I've got one here for us. But um, reasonable odds here, Daggy, in number eight, Chianti. Yes, tell us why. You like it too? Yep. Yeah, so look, I think the, the three trials that it's had uh, all been pretty impressive. Uh, so one, two trials, uh, one at Newcastle, one at Gosford, and then prior to that was second in a trial at Wyong. So it's done plenty of work uh, ready for a first up tilt. But if you go back to its form last preparation, ran sixth in the Red Roses at Flemington, uh, behind a length behind horses such as Written Beauty and Mabusha. Um, so we know that they would be very long odds on in this race. Prior to that, finished second at Canterbury Park behind Written Beauty, uh, beaten, I want to say, around about two lengths. Um, and then prior to that, uh, was at Royal R at Ramwick uh, in the Furious, uh, finished sixth in a race that was only two and a half lengths off horses, such as Dame, Giselle, Hungry Heart, and Forbidden Love. Um, and then prior to that, it Hawkesbury beat Emanate. So it's got some good form um, against some horses uh, that have been uh, in and around running in much better quality races than this. So with form like that, I'm quite surprised that it is the price it is um, first up, given the work that it's done. So I reckon around the $6 mark is a really nice bet. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, for me, the, the trials were like a cherry on top. They were really nice trials. And against reasonable horses and Chad and Hart's a sad day horse. Um at the price, each way, if you get an each way bet on tomorrow, I think it's a, a great bet. Um, nothing more to add. Yeah. It is a good race, but um, I think this might be a, a nice horse. A and um, if it's taken improvement, it should be very hard to beat. Yeah, I just can't believe the price. Yeah, there is there is a little bit here through uh, like Ocean Emperor. I talked about a couple of weeks back, um, chasing Lost and Running. Um, I don't really know the strength behind Bellucci Babe's form. Um, so, and Rainbow Connection was good on debut, but that was at Kenzo. So, I can see why the market's wide, but um, I'm happy, more than happy to take five dollars fifty if that's available. I think that's what's here now was six dollars when I did the form. So, yeah, hundred percent. Um, very good. I like it. How are you finishing today? Another good race, actually. Benchmark seventy two of thirteen hundred meters. A couple of sprue courses here. You found anything? Yep. Uh, yeah, look, I'm going for Green Flash. Yeah. Uh, thought, thought it was a really good uh, win at its only start. Um, was was long odds on and won like a good thing. Uh, I know it is a maiden stepping out of the maiden, but it tried well before that. Uh, Waller knows what to do with these horses. And uh, again, when I was doing the form about an hour ago, um, it was six dollars and it's into five dollars now, so there's already a little bit of money for it. So for me, yeah, it's going to be hard to beat. Yeah, Glenn Boss um, was the yeah the um bit of an ick feeling at that, but um I had I had talked about the horse last week as well. I got saved for this, so um the only probably it's a it's a tough race. So quite right, it's got some bill. The only bet I'll probably have here is um is Quintessa. Uh, it, it ran around in Craven Plate and um, listed races for pretty much its whole life. Um, not far off Colette, uh, chasing it home through the Oaks and the Adrian Knox. Um, and at thirteen dollars, I, I was you know I was giving this a chance in an Oaks against Colette, and uh, if that's the case, I've got to take thirteen dollars on a Wednesday. I might be a run too soon, and the horse might be gone. But around thirteen dollars, I'll, I'll have an each way play. 
Um, it might be one that uh, I might decide never to back again off this, even though it might not have a chance. So we'll see. Interesting one, but I think $13, I've, I've been this horse enough where I've got to give it a chance. It should sit close enough to be a chance as well. So my thoughts on the race there. Uh, give us your summary of your, your thoughts on a day, your best in value, Beaver. Yeah, my value is uh, obviously race seven, number eight, Chianti, uh, about the $6 mark. And my best bet of the day comes up in race three, number two, Heart of Croissants. Cool. Uh, I'll make my value Quintessa in the last, just for the reasons I've just said. And uh, the cool more colours, I like race two, Captivari, race two, number one, and Chianti in the same colours later on. Um, I think they'll both run really well here. So... That's our thoughts on a drawing at Warwick Farm. Head to progroupracing.com.au for their free tips and extensive guides as we have a quick look through the Sandown Hillside meeting with the rail in the seven metre mark. It is a drawing track there as well. We should be on dead. Where are we with the rail at? I want to see if we can make ground again. Um, we haven't for a while at Sandown. It's first time back to Hillside in a, over a month. So we'll see how this plays. I'm, I'm concerned with some of these tips because I've, found some horses that will be back in the field but um i'm shouldering arms again for the first you don't like any of the two-year-olds no, cool uh the second 1300 meters i'm well i would have backed limited vision who went to mornington and didn't fin finish in the finish so i'm glad i didn't which leaves me with um south parade again will run well here i think uh yeah off the Basically, course and distance setup. Uh, I know it comes to hillside now, but roll across, get control. Uh, Matt, Matt Cartwright knows exactly how he's got to ride it. He'll have one job and um, it's flying. So I think it's now the horse to beat. You agree? 100%. I'm with you. Yep. South Parade for me. Very good. Where are you going? Straight next? to the front. Straight to the front and straight for the Chockeys. Um, race three, number four, made of iron. Yep. Uh, one, one of its first start, last preparation, uh, resumed at Sandown here a couple of weeks ago uh, against South Parade and only finished a couple of lengths off, was well found in the market, finished off pretty well, settling back in the field in a race that was controlled up front by South Parade. Um, hopefully sit a little bit closer here, a little bit more luck in transit. Uh 1,300 metres up to the 1,600 metres certainly looked like it was looking for more ground. I think Made of Iron is a really nice bet, $6. I like it. Be bad. I like um, Steinem. I thought it was a nice day, but packing them, it just chimed in uh, like a nice horse, really, and chimed in, ran away from them. And so I'm going with the uh, – this is where it starts getting concerning. I think it might be the best horse, but – might be last in the run. So we'll know hopefully by now we have a bit of an idea of how the track's playing. It's pretty easy to tell at sand down early on whether or how that rail is going to be. So um yeah on top from me, um from your from your choice there. Uh anything in the uh, fourth beaver? Yeah, I'm uh, backing up in the fourth and going for number five contrition. Uh looks uh cherry ripe now. Uh, third up after a spell, uh, looked good winning last start, uh, won by a couple of lengths, uh, gets the right draw here. Slightly concerned about uh, Michael Walker, but um, look, uh, with any luck in running here, should be finishing off and potentially looks to horse to beat here with nice value. Cool. I'll leave that one with you. I'll head to race five over the 1,400 metres and I'm going to have an each way play on the top weight, uh, Boom Boom Becker. Um, hopefully getting across, getting sole control and uh, being very hard to run down if the rail is on around the $7.50 mark. Um, gate, inside gate there actually works at um, Sandown. So for me, I'll play that runner each way in this race, but some some... Talented horses here. I've had enough of Charlie's, so just wanted to see her get beat again. Anything else to add? Yeah, mate, I'm going for Dominus. Okay. Uh, tipped, it, tipped it last start, got out of its ground again in the race one by South Parade, which wasn't suited for horses coming back in the field. Made some nice ground in the straight and never really got a clear run uh, till very late, uh, hoping it can uh, sit a little bit closer tomorrow and get that uh, bit of luck uh, when needed. So, again... Uh, 
nice little value bet there. Very good. Um, race number, where do we get to here? What are you up to? Race number six. Do you like uh, one for yeah, one, I, one of your stables? I had nothing. No, not with a favourite. That's cool. No. All right, I'm passing. Just, just left it from away. All uh, right. What about the favourite in race seven over the 800 metres? Nope. I've gone for Deep Strike. Okay. And the price can't stable. Um, look, I thought it, uh, it really got going and chased really hard uh, to win at the uh, Pakenham uh, last start, uh, first up uh, over, I think it was, oh, it was pretty short in the market. It was well under odds on. Nice. Um, over this, yeah, over the 1600, steps up again to the 1800 here, which I think a, a bit of step up in distance here. Got good jockey who's flying at the moment, Michael D on board. Um, should be improved. Only had the four career starts. All of them have been pretty good, and I think they've all got better um, as it's gone on. So uh, nice win first up. Well found, well in the market. Only improve here. I thought it was a main danger, but I'm going to I'm going to tip the favourite here. I, I really like the win of Noble Heights. Um, eight eighteen is the one trick. So whether it can find a posse will be interesting. But the way it just chimed in and ran away. On a, on a leader's day, I thought was was pretty impressive. So um, I'll probably back both of them, um, but better result. I'll probably save Deep Strike, so come out um, winning on both, to be honest, at that price. So they're the two. I um, guess that will cover the race from me. Race number eight. Now, we were all over Pale King last time. Does it keep winning? Yeah, keeps winning. So uh, I think again it'll jump, sit in the spot here. This is this is no this is no harder than last start, that's for sure, uh, if not easier. So I think it's at the moment this looks a good thing and clearly the best bet of the day. Yeah, well the horse that beats the one that's going to run second again, I think Al Chevalier. Um, yep, yeah, agree. Pale King on top from me as well. Natural improvement. Uh, I think they're probably going to head towards Queensland or something. I think it's a pretty talented horse. Anything in the 1,000 metres to wrap the day up race nine on a Wednesday, benchmark 70? I am going to go for Pinkham. Okay. Um, I thought it's first up it's first up run this preparation, got backed off the map, was caught three wide and stuck on and finished third. Um, look, uh, bit of few, few excuses last start at Flemington, uh, but again, it was in a pretty good, quality race uh, where Marbusha gave him a bit of a bath. Um, there's no Marbushas in this race, and this is a real step back in distance, and I suspect uh, in, in class, and I suspect they've uh, done that to try and uh, get a bit of confidence back in this horse. Uh, so for that reason, I'm going to follow up with Pinkham again. Not not one of my favourite jockeys aboard, but uh, I'm hoping he can just hold on and do, do the trick. You've panned him three times in the last five minutes. I know he's he's all right. He, he, I just I, like Walker. I just struggled to. He's, I hope he goes all right tomorrow because I've tipped him <laughs> a few. I've tipped him on a couple there, um, and I've uh, I've got a few of the Price Kent stable uh, getting a few winners tomorrow. So hopefully uh, they go all right. Uh, I like I like the two that chased each other coming through last time. Um, Modi and Casadia. Uh, they both ran on quite well. Uh, Modi is now second up. Um, sorry. Oh, what's the hell this? Yeah, no, it's had the freshen up, I should say, six weeks. Um, probably going to get back to last is the main concern. So I'm on, I, I, if I play in this race, I'd want to see him making ground. Uh, from Quesadilla, who might be this only bet if they're not running on from last. Um, nice win here uh, a month ago. And then just missed chasing Hecker Express, who's a, an okay bunny and can hold on it. Uh, tracks like Canberra, uh, Cranbourne. So, yeah, the two I'm looking at in this race. I know you're saying Pinkham, but I think you've just got to forgive the straight run. It just, did, I don't think it just handed to the straight at all. It sort of just sat out there by itself and sort of fluffed around up the straight, really. So, treat it as a trial and we'll see. I think we'll see the real one tomorrow. If it doesn't run well tomorrow, we don't worry about it anymore. That's it. Uh, your best in value? Yeah, my best bet's race eight, Pale King. 
Uh, and then I've got a few value bets uh, that I really like, but the one I've uh, put on top is race three, number four, made of iron. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm with you. Pale King now, I think, gets a right run. Should be the horse to beat. Uh, I'll, I'll make my value that's bracket in the last. Let's go say Quesadilla, but a saver on Modia. Uh, and that sums up our thoughts at Sandown. Um, quick, man, quick shout out and good luck to ZM going for his fourth Von Dusa steeple at Oak Bank tomorrow. The old jumping marvel going around again. Um, anything up north? Yeah, mate, can't, uh, can't leave without a couple of tips up north for you. I've only got two tomorrow at Durban. Uh, race three, number 11, Max Kalema. Mm-hmm. And race six, number seven, Amici. Okay, cool. Um, how's the weather up there? Have you looked? Uh, it's This truck looks like it's about a soft five at the moment. Cool. All right. Good luck with that. So, so hopefully, not too, hopefully not too bad. Perfect. All I, didn't, right. I didn't do anything at uh, Oak Bank. I didn't even know the uh, the jumps were on. So, um, yeah, it's the Von Dusa and look at that. another lead up. But, ZM. Uh, ZM's back there from his New Zealand campaign going for his fourth win in that race. Um, we might have to have work watch. out our program uh, come Warnable week. It's a month away, so we need to work out what days we'll be on for Warnable. We might try and do a couple for the week. Um, once Sounds good. In there. But um, until then, punters, good luck tomorrow. Subscribe to us. Uh, you'll find us on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, anywhere else good podcasts are found. And, of course, check out progetracing.com.au for plenty more. And we'll catch you for a look for, towards Caulfield and the Group 1 Vinery Stakes Day at Rose Hill this Friday. Catch you then.